Good morning, everyone. Today's clickbait question is, does your device have a universal backdoor? And it turns out that the answer is probably yes, unless you've put specific effort into making sure that you're running primarily free and open source software, your device does have what I would call a universal backdoor. Now, when we talk about backdoors in computer software or devices, the idea is that there's some mechanism where someone other than you can get access to your device or your software and access your data or control what your device does without you even knowing about it. And the most obvious risk to this is that people can access your personal data, but there's a like more extreme issue here, and that is that a backdoor isn't just a way to get in and look at stuff. It is a remote control mechanism where someone else has the remote control. When I talk about a backdoor, when I say that someone has remote control of your device, that raises two questions. Who has access and how do they have this remote control access? And the answer is software updates. Any sort of automatic software update mechanism has most of the properties of a backdoor. The whole point of software updates is that we're going to download arbitrary software from a server on the internet and then run it on the local machine and we're going to run it with arbitrary privileges, no restrictions. Any sort of permissions that normally restrict apps don't apply, any other security mecha mechanisms don't apply because updates have to be able to update, update the operating system code and the operating system code is what enforces these security rules. Who has the ability to do this? Your software provider. Now, the idea of calling this a universal backdoor comes from Richard Stallman, who is complaining about proprietary software and saying that automatic updates of proprietary software constitute a universal backdoor, and he's largely right there. And the obvious implications of that are real. Software vendors do occasionally add malicious features. For example, Apple recently pushed an update that causes iPhones to scan all the photos on them, check against a blacklist of banned photos, and then if it finds any banned photos, it will report them. The excuse for this is child abuse images. That's a frequent excuse for this sort of thing. But once the mechanism is in place to scan for files with specific fingerprints and report them if they're found on anyone's cell phone, this can easily be abused. You can imagine some sort of whistleblower leaking government documents and then Apple adding the signatures for those government documents to their blacklist. And then if anybody has a banned leaked document on their phone, they suddenly get reported. So that's no good. Another feature that's frequently added to especially proprietary software, but not necessarily always proprietary software, is telemetry. The idea is the software is going to record all of the user's actions. How do they move their mouse? What buttons do they press? What keys do they press, etc and send them to a telemetry server for analysis. Now, the excuse for this is that it allows the software development developers to improve the user experience of the software. And sure, if you can see what all of your users are doing step by step and using the software, you can go ahead and try to figure out where there are rough edges on the software and improve them. But it's obvious that this is some pretty valuable personal data if we're seeing everything that users do with the software. And in Snowden's memoir, he describes the NSA having access to a tool which sounds exactly like replays of telemetry data. You can see recordings of how like the user's moving their mouse and what they're doing in a piece of software. So not only it, does it sound sketchy, it sounds like it's being used in exactly the way for surveillance that we would expect it to be used if it is sketchy. But software updates by themselves aren't the thing I really want to talk about here. And Stallman didn't get the entire story when he blamed this on proprietary software. Free and open source licenses don't solve the problem either. Now, there's a major defense against these sort of global updates that add malicious features to software. And that is that people analyze updates when they get shipped by major software vendors. If I don't know, Microsoft decided to add a uh, always open fixed password remote desktop server to Windows, people would notice in about 20 minutes, it would be a big news story. Microsoft would get terrible press and people would turn off automatic updates for Windows, which would cause all kinds of like disaster. So while vendors do add these sort of edge case 
malicious features like photo scanning or telemetry somehow manages to get by based on the user experience excuse, really obvious hard backdoor functionality doesn't get included in global software updates. But for a lot of these software update mechanisms, the user tends to be signed into an account with the vendor. If you're updating your iPhone, you're signed into an Apple account on the same device. If you're updating your Android device, you're signed into a Google account. Microsoft, you're signed into a Microsoft account. And once you're signed into an account, you are individually identifiable. And that means that the vendor, when you request an update from them, can send you a special update, either an update just for you or an update for a group that you've been profiled into. So for example, an update just for you could open a remote desktop server. So someone can just log into your system remotely and do whatever they want. And you'd only notice if you personally were analyzing updates for that sort of, uh, that sort of hijinks. But the other case that's possibly even scarier is the idea of getting an update for a group that you're in. So imagine you go to a political protest. Uh, imagine a political protest for something that you would support. And then you and the thousand other people who went to that political protest all get an automatic update that adds telemetry for some piece of software that you're using. Now, in general, if a software update for everybody added telemetry, that might not be that sketchy. I think that's kind of sketchy. I try to avoid software that has telemetry features. But if only a few people have telemetry added, that's definitely for surveillance, uh, broad surveillance of that group of people. And the only way you can tell that you got a specific sort of targeted surveillance update is if you compared the update that you got as a member of the group to the update that other people got at the same time or the update that they didn't get if the vendor didn't push a corresponding update at the same time for everyone. So that's sort of hard to detect. And being in a group that is targeted is much more likely than being individually targeted. So that's the thing that I'm trying to talk about here is this idea of uh, targeted updates constituting a backdoor. So again, for this to happen, we have to have automatic updates directly from the vendor and you have to be signing into the software with an account with that vendor. The next question is what software or what devices are subject to a universal backdoor? So first example, an iPhone. Apple does automatic updates and you sign into an Apple account to use an iPhone, so iPhone universal backdoor. How about an Android device? Well, if you get an Android device from Google and sign into your Google account, then although the core Android system may update through your uh, cell provider, the Google Play services framework and the sort of Android um, core libraries frameworks update directly from Google and you're signed in with your Google account. So Google has universal backdoor access to your Android device in those circumstances. How about Microsoft Windows? In most cases, you sign into Windows with a Windows account that's a cloud account rather than a local account. Uh, it used to be that you could create a purely local account on Windows and not do a cloud sign in. My guess is that that's still an option, but you probably have to go out of your way to do that. The default seems to be that you're signing into a cloud Microsoft account and therefore Microsoft can deliver targeted updates and therefore Windows usually has a universal backdoor, a targeted universal backdoor. Here's one that's sort of interesting. Mozilla Firefox on Windows or Mac, or if you downloaded Firefox directly from Mozilla on Linux and installed using their installer, these all have a universal backdoor because you sign into a Firefox account, sign into a Mozilla account, and you get your updates directly from the vendor. This isn't a problem if you get Firefox through a operating system package on Linux, like a Debian package or a, a Fedora package or an Arch package, because then you get your automatic updates from your um, operating system provider and you're signed into your account directly with Mozilla. So unless they conspire, which we, I don't know, we can probably assume they're not ex they're not conspiring in that way unless you're, I don't know, Osama bin Laden, then they might. But for normal people, they probably aren't conspiring. And so that's reasonably safe. I still don't sign into a Firefox account, but 
that is how it is. Now that we've seen what devices are subject to a universal backdoor, the next question is, how do we avoid it? And the answer is, use software that doesn't either provide automatic updates or doesn't request that you sign into a user account. For example, if you use the Debian operating system on your desktop computer, Debian does provide automatic updates, but you're able to get those automatic updates anonymously. Debian doesn't even have a like Debian account that normal users sign into to use the system. But even if it did, it might be okay because there's a big network of mirrors for Debian packages. And so you don't have to connect to servers controlled by the Debian project to get Debian updates. And that means that this idea of targeted updates would be really difficult for Debian since all you do to get Debian updates is connect to a web server and request packages by sort of like name and version number without identifying yourself at all. So in order for the Debian project to put a backdoor into a software update, it would have to be an untargeted backdoor. Another example is Lineage OS and other mostly open source custom Android ROM. Again, they do provide updates, although in the case of Lineage OS, those updates aren't really automatic. It'll notify you that there's an update and then you can install that update if you want to. And the sort of expectation is not that you're gonna be installing every update. They seem to expect that you install updates occasionally. But those updates, again, are downloaded anonymously or just they make a single file, which is the new version, and then you go ahead and download that file and install it. There's no mechanism for targeted updates in the system. People like to talk about the difference between mass surveillance and targeted surveillance, especially in relation to the United States government, and how we know that mass surveillance is an issue that applies to everybody, both the United States government and big tech companies surveil everybody that they can and store the data that they collect to be used for various purposes. And mass surveillance is difficult to avoid in general, but there are definitely things that we can do to reduce the amount of mass surveillance we're subject to. For example, avoiding using software that has telemetry functionality. On the other hand, individual targeted surveillance is really difficult to avoid, especially from uh, groups like the US government, if there's an FBI surveillance van across the street from you, then probably you're in the sort of situation where they're also willing to break into your house, either because they have a warrant or they have some excuse to not think they need a warrant. And so that sort of individual targeted surveillance is something that only a few people directly have to worry about, and that's really hard to defend against. This looks like a government-only targeted attack, so this isn't something that normal people have to worry about, right? Well, I think there's another category of semi-targeted attack that's worth at least considering here. Imagine, for example, that you're gonna go get involved in a protest. Uh, here's an example protest. This was the Catalonian general strike back in 2017, which was around the time when Catalonia was trying to do an independence referendum from Spain. So the Spanish government would have loved to be able to send a targeted update to all the people who showed up at this protest and further surveil them. That would have been perfect for trying to avoid Catalonian independence. And we can think of a bunch of other protests in all kinds of places around the world where the local government would have loved to be able to target the protesters for a targeted software update. But even if you're not worried about governments, there's another sort of attack that we could worry about here. Um, imagine for a moment that you are a user of the API for a financial website like eTrade. Having API access enabled for your eTrade account means that anybody who can get an API key for your account can issue trading commands that will be executed instantly without human confirmation. And it's pretty easy to imagine ways to turn that into just being able to take all your money. And further, it sounds like it could be pretty easy to profile people who are likely to have API access enabled on their E-Trade account. So imagine someone collects a like large list of people who are likely to have API access enabled and then bribes an update engineer at Mozilla to send a targeted update for Firefox to those people that will steal an API key and therefore steal all their money. So that's an example of how even if the threat isn't government and even if the threat isn't big tech companies working in their own interest, there's still a risk to having software with this universal backdoor functionality. 
So it might be worth considering whether trying to avoid software with this universal backdoor functionality might be good computing hygiene. That would mean trying to avoid software that has automatic updates directly from the vendor and where you sign into the software with a vendor cloud account. So thanks for watching this video and have a wonderful day.